Hi everyone and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at how to use a RACI matrix in organizational change. So what is a RACI matrix? Well, a RACI matrix is a very simple tool that can be used to clarify roles and responsibilities during a project or in fact any organizational change. Now RACI itself is an acronym standing for responsible, accountable, consulted and informed and a RACI matrix basically enables you to specify who is responsible, who is accountable, who should be consulted and who should be informed for every single task that makes up the project you're working on. Now, what do each of these terms mean in a little bit more detail? Well, responsible, these people are responsible for doing the actual work of the tasks. They're the ones sitting there and getting it done. Uh, there can be more than one of them. Now, accountable, this is the person who is ultimately accountable for the work being done in a satisfactory manner. Now, what that means is that they are the person that must sign off the work that the responsible person or people are producing. Now, there should only ever be a maximum of one accountable person. Now, C means communication, and these are people whose input to the task is needed so in a way there's two-way communication with these people i these are people who need to be informed and you know they are just communicated one way maybe with status reports so let's look at a racy matrix example and this will all make a bit more sense so here i have a pretty simple racy matrix example and what you can see here is in this top left corner, I've just defined what the different terms mean. Now, that's useful because whilst you might understand exactly what the terms mean, the people who you're distributing this matrix to may not. Um, and then down the left-hand side here, you can see the different work areas. Um, and in each work areas, we have tasks that need to be completed. And where a RACI matrix comes into its own is, is when different tasks span an organization. So you can see here that we have these different kind of areas within the organization, the leadership team, the project team, and the external resources. And below that, we have the individuals here. In this case, they're just defined by their initials. The one exception to that is for the leadership team. We have the whole team where we want to treat them as a group. And you can do that wherever you want. Then if you look at an individual task, uh, you can see, let me pick one here that's a bit more interesting. Um, let's say create launch plan. You can see that there's just one accountable person and there are multiple people responsible for creating this actual launch plan. And as part of creating the launch plan, there are these parties that need to be informed that it's happening. Um, now, the rollback plan, which is this task here, you can see, again, it's the same person who's accountable who will sign off that the rollback plan has been created satisfactorily. Uh, this person and this person are responsible for doing the work. And as part of creating the rollback plan, this person, this person, and these two people here will be consulted. So that's all there is to it. Now, one problem with a RACI matrix can be that when you have lots of R's like this, it can be difficult to know who is the one person who is actually responsible for pulling the other people together so the work gets done. But we'll come back to that a bit later. So the RAC acronym can be pretty easy to remember, but it's kind of hard to remember how to use it um, and that's where this diagram of a racy triangle comes in. It provides you with a visual way to remember how to use the tool. Now, one thing, a kind of a tip here, is you'll notice that one of the R's is in bold, uh, and that's a tip you can use with a racy matrix by putting one of the responsible people in bold you're effectively saying that they're responsible for pulling the other team members together and actually making sure this task gets done. Um, now, looking at this triangle at the top, 
you can see that you have just one accountable person. There can be multiple people responsible for doing the work. There can be lots of people you can communicate with, and lots of people may need to be informed. Now, here we're looking at what are the best practices of using a RACI matrix. Well, you should create the RACI chart with your team present, and that's to ensure you know, their buy-in and nobody disagrees with their responsibility for the task. Uh, you should also make sure that every task has one and only one accountable person, as we've just mentioned. And you should ensure that that accountable person actually has the authority to sign off on the task in question. It's good practice to try and push authority down the organization by assigning A's to the lowest rank people possible. That way you don't end up with just one person uh, accountable for everything. Also good practice is to see if R's can be removed from the task and that because that enables it to be completed more quickly. Also good practice, can some C's be removed? Uh, reason for this is too much two-way communication between too many people can really slow down a task. And finally, you know, too many eyes, too many people who need to be in informed can create a reporting burden. Is it possible that when the plan is created with the team present, uh, that as everyone's agreed on the plan, you can simply get on with it, only letting people know maybe if something exceptional happens? So what are the advantages and disadvantages of a RACI matrix? Well, in terms of advantages, they provide clarity over who is to do what. They allow you to ensure that each task has the right roles assigned, and they help you avoid the blame game. So everyone's responsibility should be clear from the outset. And if that's the case, and you've distributed to document to all the stakeholders, then it's very hard to play that blame game. Now, the disadvantages of a RACI matrix are if a task has lots of R's, so lots of responsi pe responsible people, then who is ultimately responsible for making sure all those different people pull together to get the task done? And we'll come back to this in a moment. Now, another disadvantage is it can take a bit of trial and error to get the right granularity. So if you list down every single task that needs to be done in a RACI matrix, it can be too much. If you go up, if you're at sort of a huge high level, it can be not enough detail. So it can take a bit of trial and error to work out what's exactly right for you. So coming back to this problem of too many responsible people, there is an adjustment to a RACI matrix called a RASCI matrix. And a RASCI matrix solves the problem of too many R's by introducing the letter S. And in the case of a RASCI, S stands for supporting. So basically with RASCI, the responsible person pulls all the work together and all the, with the help of all the supporting people. So you can have, with a RASCI, one accountable person just like before, one responsible person who pulls all the work together with the help of zero or many supporting people. And then just like before, lots of people who are involved in two-way communication and lots of people who are just you know, informed as to the, the status of the work. So that's it for this lesson. Don't forget to, down, to download the template uh, below this video so you can get started creating your own RACI matrix.